Christmas, my mugs, and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. And thank you for coming back. This is my little platform when I can study math students into math masters. And I post videos weekly, so subscribe and turn on the notification button if you want to know when I post any new videos. It really does help the channel and it allows me to make more videos for you. Alright, so in this video, it's going to be a quick one. I'm going to be teaching you about floor plans and really just how you would go about answering floor plan questions in an exam. If you are interested in any of the revision classes, the live revision classes that I offer, and this is normally before the prelim exams or the final exams, please email mathsmonkeyhelp at gmail.com and in the description just add revision class 2024 and I'll send you all the information you need in order to join those classes. All right, so without further ado, let's jump into this video. So let's look at floor plans, right? Essentially, what's important to note when dealing with floor plans is that floor plans really looks at like houses or buildings as if you are looking at it from bird's eye view, so from the top. So always remember floor plans will always be sort of giving you the floor of either buildings or aircraft or whatever, and it will always be looking at it from a bird's eye view, from the top view. Okay, what are tips that would be helpful for you when approaching floor plan type questions? One, remember, read and look at everything given on a floor plan before reading the questions. Also, study the key, right? So the key would be that thing on the left where they say, okay, this shape represents a chair. This shape represents a table. So that you actually know what are the symbols in the floor plan and what they actually represent. That the second one is they don't pick the floor plan sheet as needed when you're answering questions about left and right. So this is one thing that I need students make mistakes. And this is sometimes you are confusing left and right when being asked questions because you are looking at it from a static point of view. So when you are being asked questions, turn the map around so that you are clearly able to see what is moving towards the right and what is moving towards the left or what is on the right or what is on the left, okay? Then another helpful tip is always pay attention to where north is facing, right? North in, all, uh, in some of the questions won't always be facing upward, okay? So no matter in whatever direction the arrow is pointing, that will be north, to the right of that arrow would be east and to the left of that arrow would be west. And then at the bottom will be south. So pay attention to where the north is facing. Okay, now that we have some sort of guidelines on how to approach these questions, let's actually do one. Okay, so on the left here it says, the floor plan of a chalet close to the mountain zebra national park is shown below. So we look, okay, floor plan of a chalet, at least now I know what it is. And now I look at everything. I see, okay, here's a cupboard bedrooms, the different rooms, I pay attention that north in this case is facing up and at the bottom here they give me a key and they tell me that this is a window so I can see these are the windows on the image and the doors are represented like this which we then can clearly see there and then the cupboard door is then this a broken line. Okay, now that I've read everything, I've looked at everything, I've checked out and studied the table, um, I've actually checked out and studied the key now I can actually answer the questions. So the first one says, state the number of doors. Now, whenever you're dealing with floor plan questions, the, 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 what the examiner is actually testing is how well are you able to understand what is being given to you. Okay, so a lot of the questions you'll be able to find there. There's very few calculations when it comes to floor plans. They just want to see, are you able to take and look at what is given and then answer questions based on what is given. So in this question, it says state the number of doors on the floor plan with right hand side openings. So this is where I told you, turn this around so that you are actually able to know right and left. So right hand side openings means if you are facing the door and you open up, you will be opening it up with your right. Okay, so if I stand in front of this door here, if you have a look here outside the living room, you'll see that because it's swinging this way, if I stand in front, that is a right hand opening, right? However, if I were to stand in front of the bedroom, right, and face this way, 
you will see that it would be my left hand that would be reaching forward. Okay, so they want us to only count the number of right hands. So you'd see, okay, it's one, two, three, four, five doors. And picture yourself by rotating which, um, what arm you would need when you're actually opening each of these doors. So this one is right, this one is left. This one, if I stand here and I face it, my right hand will go forward. Same with this one, my right hand. If I stand here, however, my left hand will push forward. Okay, so the right hand is, this is one, two, and three. And the question just wants to know, state the number. So I would then answer as three. Okay, simple. Looking at the question, turning the floor plan as I need to make sure. Remember, you, this is now obviously on the PC, but when you have a question put in front of you, you have a page, you can turn it around to check your right from left. Okay, what direction is this house facing? Now, when you are looking at in which direction a house is facing, pay attention to north. The front door will tell you which way the house is facing. So if I look here, here I know north is this way. Here is the front door that's coming into the living room. So this front door is facing this direction, which means it is facing south. Okay, so when they ask in which direction is the house facing, that is always what is the love the front door of the house in which direction is that front door facing or the front part of the house right next question write down the names of the rooms that will face the afternoon sun now here what they're asking they're actually checking one that you know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west and where that is in terms of in relation to the house or the floor plan that they've given you here so if you have a look here, we now know that this is north, right? It's this way, okay? And if the sun is rising inside of the east, it's going from right to left. So on the right, it will be in the, on the right side in the morning, and it will move over to the left side in the afternoon, which is then the afternoon sun, which will mean it will be on this side. So the three rooms then in the afternoon that will get afternoon sun will then be bedroom one, the bathroom and bedroom two, which will all be on this side. Okay. Number four, how many more windows than doors does the chalet have? Okay, so here they're now checking, do you know how to identify and count the windows? Do you know how to identify and count the doors? And then calculating the difference means you're taking the one and subtracting the other one. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five windows, uh, sorry, five doors, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven windows. So that means I'll say seven minus the five, and it will give me two. So there are two more windows than there are doors. Okay, so again, there was no major calculations required in the section. You really just have to pay attention to what is given and what is being asked. Okay, let's do a few more questions. It says here, okay, here is a seating plan below and it represents a seating arrangement in a coach of a train. Okay, so picture this. This is now in a coach of a train. And again, I look, okay, so north is again facing up. I've got the left side, which is front, and the right side, which is back. And the back side, we have the toilet and we've got a door that goes from the actual passenger section to the toilet. Right. Then I see window. I've got all the windows here on the left hand side and look at the doors, right? And then here it says seat without a power socket. And then with a star is a seat with a power socket. So a power socket just simply means a place where you can actually plug something in. Okay, so now let's see. How many passengers can be seated in one coach? Right, so again we will look. This is the coach. We see counting all the chairs. Right, so you've got six, 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 and then we've got six there. So essentially we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten groups of six, which then gives me a total of 60 chairs. Okay, next one. Write down the number of the seat close to the window and toilet. Okay, so if I look here, do you see on this side, here the closest to the toilet is this one, and here's a window there, and there's a toilet here, so it would be K, 
1. Okay, again, we're only just looking at the information that's being given. Then it says, in which general direction is the toilet from seat B6? Now, when they're asking general direction, it's always compass direction, right? So you're always going to say north, south, east, or west, um, or a combination of those. So in this case, from B6, we have B over here and here is 6. And so if I were to look at the toilet, I'd have to go down and right. So down, according to the arrow, is south and right is east. So that means I am moving in a southeasterly direction. You can just say SE or you can write out the words southeasterly. Okay, number four, determine the probability as a percentage of randomly selecting a seat with a PowerPoint in this coach. So here, this is a probability question where they want to know what is the probability that you actually end up with a PowerPoint. So your top number will always be what is being asked, right? So which is the PowerPoint seats. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine which will always be over the total of whatever it is they're asking. So here the total number of seats. So we have 9 over 60 because we found out that the total number of seats is 60 in the first question. And then we will take this, multiply it by 100, and that will then give us 15% because they ask it as because they've asked they've asked they've asked it as a percentage. All right, and that is how you need to go about answering floor plan questions. All right, so there's that video. Hopefully you found it helpful, and if you did, I would appreciate the thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for future videos, you can add in the comment section below. If you, again, you are interested in any of the revision classes that I have to offer, email Max Monkey Help with the title Revision Class 2024 or whatever year you are watching this video in and I will share all the details that you need in order to join those classes. Alright, so thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!